Okay, today we're going to record a quick tutorial on how to use numbers to figure out compound growth. Compound growth really means how money will grow in the bank if you let it grow by itself year after year. And basically what you're counting on is the interest to use time to accrue a lot of money for you when you're not really paying much attention to it. So let's put compound growth here. Now it's sort of complicated because there are a couple of things that are going on. First of all, we have to know what year we're talking about. And we're just going to do this by your age. So assume you're 13 to start with. And let's assume you have some initial investment. Maybe somebody gave you some money. Maybe they gave you $100 for your birthday. And then let's assume this all happens with very convenient times of January 1st. And so on January 1st, you have $100. Okay. And then let's also assume that every year you're going to put money in. So that would be your annual contribution. It doesn't have to be much. Let's say you decide to put $10 in every year. And so we need to know what the bank is going to calculate the interest on. So that's called your interest base. Now your interest base is going to equal your beginning date, which in this case is your initial investment that you got from over on the left, plus your own contribution that you're putting in this year. Okay, so your interest base is 110. And what is your interest rate? Well, interest rates used to be much higher in the past. But let's suppose you go to a really generous bank and they give you 5%. Crazy, right? Oh, boy. Oh, you know, this is supposed to be a number that's, that's written as a tax. Let's put that in as a number. 5%. Okay. And that way it shows up on the right. If we put it in as text, it shows up on the left, and that's not right. Okay, so um, interest earned. That's going to be the interest base times the interest rate. This is text. Interest earned. And that's going to be this number, interest base. Oops. Let's do this way equals, good, interest based times interest rate. And just looking at that should be like 5.5%, right? Nice, or 5 dollars 5 Okay, let's slide this over a little bit. Make this narrower so everything fits on the page better. Sorry. Okay, and over here, we want to know how much we're going to have at the end of December. Text end December 31st and so the December 31st is going to be the it's going to equal your interest base plus the interest that you earn there you go 115.5 that's how much money you'll have at the end of the year we got to get this all to fit nicely on one page. So I'm going to narrow these a little bit. Come on. Didn't do that. Okay. Let's go the other way around. Okay. Is it back out? Got to down. Just going back. There we go. Okay. Now, what we need to do is start carrying some of this stuff down. So, see this uh, down here at the bottom? I'm adding one row at a time. That's that blue equal sign. And I'm going to add a bunch of rows because we're trying to get you this retirement age. I don't know how far to go, but let's say we go to 60. Okay. And your age is going to be equal to your previous year plus, well, oh, not four, silly, plus one. Okay. So the next year you're 14. Now we want to carry this down, but there's no easy way to copy it. So we're going to fill it and the fill is going to take this formula of the previous year plus one 
all the way down. We'll do that again because it didn't fit on our scrawny little iPad here. How far did I get? 64, one more. Need one more. Just one more, and we're going to fill that because we want it to be a formula. Okay, so that sort of shows you how many years you're going to be working. Presumably, you're going to start working around here somewhere. Maybe you'll go to grad school. Okay, your initial investment, that's going to stay the same. That's why it's called the initial investment. We leave that. Uh, your, uh, okay, so let's go here. And December 31st is going to be the same thing as this thing here. So we're going to say this, whoops, this guy here is going to equal end December 31st. Are we good with that? Yeah, that works. See how it's lining up on the right? The, the reason the ones above it lined up on the left is because they're entered wrong, but you want to enter the, these things as numbers. Okay, now our annual contribution, this one here, is going to equal whatever we put in the previous year, $10. Good, so we like that. And the interest base, well, that's going to equal the beginning amount plus our $10. Okay, see how I'm putting the formulas in? If I put the numbers in, I'm going to get all messed up. I want to put the I want to put the cells in. So now our interest base is 125. Interest rate, that's going to equal the cell above it, 5%. Nice. Okay, interest earned, that's going to be 5% on the 125. So we do equals this guy times this guy. What do we think that's going to be about? Like six dollars and seventy-five cents, maybe. Ha! Oh, six twenty-seven. That's nice close. Okay, so now this guy is going to be the interest base equals the interest base plus the interest that we earn. That's your principal plus your interest. So at the end of the second year, you put in a hundred dollars. You put in twenty dollars. Oops, that one. Stop. And this one. Okay, so you put in one hundred and twenty dollars, and you come up with one hundred and thirty-one. Okay, so now here's the really cool thing. Look at this. Dunk. Pull over here, and now we start filling down. And because everything's a formula all the numbers are going to fit in here. Easy, breezy, lemon, squeezy. We'll just keep filling down. And those numbers are growing. Woo, doctor. Look at that. Whoa. Get over $2,000. By the time you're 65, you'll have $3,900 in your account. Okay, so let's go back and clean this up because it's sort of messy. Okay, so this thing here, see up here this paintbrush in the corner? We want this to be a currency and we don't want auto, we want zero. Let's see what that does. Okay, same thing here. Currency, zero. Ooh, it cleaned everything up. Okay, so now, looking around here, how much money, ooh, hoo, hoo, how much money did we put in? Okay, so let's calculate how much we put in. Okay, equals the sum of the money that we paid in. What? This should be, I should have this 100. Why didn't do this? Hold on. Uh, that says text. Let's put a number in here and see what we get. Done. What do we get down at the bottom now? 100. Nice. Okay, this says text, I bet. Yeah, let's put that in as a number. Done. Boop. Okay, now. Now we go in here and we want to say equals sum of that column. 
Okay, so we paid in 100, 100, and we paid in 530, and we let the interest build up, and now at the end of all these years, we have, come on, stop, stop making that mess. We have $3,900. That's a lot of compound growth, isn't it? There's some, like, look at this. We paid in $10, and it went up $200 in one year. So the lesson here, okay, now well, one thing, one last thing. Suppose we didn't put in 100 at the beginning. If we put in 100, you get 39 out. What if you had put in double this here? If you'd put 200 in here, what do you get? Holy smoke, it's going to be a lot. What? Oh dear. Oh dear. Oh, I see. That's okay. Haven't done anything bad there. Equals this guy. Okay. Let's go back to where we were. If you put in a hundred, you come out with thirty-nine, right? Yes. Thirty-nine oh five. If you put in two hundred here, what do you come out with? Ooh, you come out with fifty-two. So with just a one hundred dollar difference, you come out with over a thousand dollars difference. More like eleven hundred. That's pretty good. Okay, go back to zero. Go back to where we started. And yeah, this is a chart that shows compound interest. Pretty cool. You can do this. You can be a big success in, in the financial markets. Okay, good luck.